stuck one on that one. I'm not sure we stole some out under so many of these. Yep, look at that. You did. I did. I told you I would. We gotta eat some anyway, so. These are good potatoes. Oh, yeah, these are beautiful potatoes. Good morning, everybody. This is Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead this morning. It's a chilly 50 degrees out here this morning, guys. Uh, highly unusual for May the 14th here in the Deep South. We had a massive flood here the other day, which has been happening on a weekly basis. Uh, if y'all watched our previous video, we talked about our potatoes here, how pretty and green they all were and everything. And then all of a sudden we got that massive flood in here. And all of a sudden now, they have taken on the, uh, we call it a blight. It, ha it happens every year about this time. And the plants take on all these spots and stuff like this, and they die off really quick. Normally, we leave them in the ground and let the plants completely die down. And then we will harvest them after that because the skin seems to toughen up on them and does a lot better. But guys, we've been watching the weather, and we have a possible... Believe it or not, we have a possible tropical system heading into the Gulf this coming week. And we have too many potatoes here for us to wait till the last minute to try to run out here and dig all of them. So what we thought we would do is come out here and go ahead and start harvesting our favorite potatoes, which is the, this is the red Lesotas. This is our favorite potato to harvest and to keep and to use I mean, these things are just fantastic potatoes. Nice, beautiful potatoes. Uh, so it's our go-to potato here, other than the fingerling potatoes. Uh, this is our favorite right here. They do better in the deep south than any of them do. They're not real high and starchy and all this kind of stuff like a lot of the white ones are. Um, they just are very prolific. They do a good job, and they make a nice size potato. You know what I mean? It's, that's a decent potato right there. So... We're going to go down through here this morning, guys, and we're going to try to see if we can't get some of these out. And uh, we're, going, we're trying not to disturb our high bed that we have here because our plans are to come in right behind these as soon as the weather is permissive and to replant it with sweet potato draws so that we can use these same beds because these potatoes did not use up all the fertilizer out of the soil. And contrary to what a lot of people believe, sweet potatoes and the red potatoes are two different varieties all together. Sweet potatoes are really not a potato. They're really in the morning glory family. So there's no problems that I've found with, with diseases or anything like that. You know, one going from one to the other. Uh, I've done this all my life and I've never really had an issue with it. So we're going to uh, continue digging here, guys, and see how many of these we can get right quick. I I'm curious as to what one row is going to produce. Now we only planted a row and a half of the reds this year. We have several other varieties down through here and we're going to be checking them as we go along also to see how they're doing. Uh, some of them are dying out faster than others. We're going to try to get the ones that's dying out the first and maybe give the others another few days to see how they do, you know, in lieu of this storm coming in just to kind of uh, see how it's going to work out. We just don't want to be right at the last minute trying to harvest all these potatoes with a storm coming in here possibly. So we're going to get digging. Okay, as I was going through here this morning, guys, I had this big old pretty potato here, but when you see these white specks start popping out on a potato like that, that tells you this potato may, might very well be rotten in the center. And when I flipped it over, I mean, it looks good, but when you mash it, look at that. You see that water coming out of the middle of it? That potato, even though it feels real firm around the edges, it's rotten in the middle. And that's what these little white spots indicate here, that this potato is fixing to go bad on it. 
we have water coming out of the middle of this so let's just cut into it the potato feels good and hard the water's running out all over my hand you see this here the whole inside of that potato is rotten this is what you have to watch out for when you're harvesting potatoes it looks fine but look for them little white specks you see all over the outside of it that usually signifies this potato is fixing to go bad now these uh these plants aren't dead yet these plants are still got a lot of life left in them but guys they just they're, they're not going to hold up the uh the ground here we we what we done was we came in and we uh we dumped all that pond dirt those y'all who've been following us knew that uh, lance dug our pond out and we had just truckload after truckload of black rich dirt out of them bottoms and we come back up here and put that on tops of these hills and that's what i believe is the the reason we're having such a good harvest this morning is because we have put all that rich dirt back up here on the hills now one thing you don't want to do this is a definite no-no that is do not compost your potato plants these potato plants carry lots of diseases and viruses and stuff like that we're just piling them out in little piles outside the garden over here we'll come back with the tractor later on and we'll harvest all this stuff up with a bucket and take it off out in the woods and just pile it up in the woods and let nature over the next several years break that stuff down and, and utilize it because we're not ever going to go in there and, and use any of that for uh for the garden and we try to get as much of the potato plant residue as we can out of the garden because we don't want to overwinter or, or cause any kind of diseases to stay in our soil it's just about being good about doing management guys you have to manage your gardens and take out stuff that doesn't belong in it guys when it comes to storing potatoes that's very difficult if one potato like that one i had just then if it happens to be up against another potato and touches it you're going to lose both of those potatoes when wanda and i store our potatoes we usually do it in an underground facility and we have bread trays and what i do on a bread tray is i put a layer of cardboard down and i lay my potatoes out on that cardboard where they're not touching one another and then once a week i come down like that and i check those bread trays and if one potato's gone bad you'll see on the cardboard you'll see a spot there that's real wet around it and what you do is just ease that potato out of there and get rid of it and give that time to dry up before you put another potato back in its place because if you put it in there and it's wet you just continue to spread it I mean, that's in my hand. Look at that. That's a friend. That's a fingerling. That's a fingerling. You tell me that pond dirt can't grow some taters. So we're to this. Well, there's a couple. Golly. These are deep, deep in the ground. How deep down there? Some of these are eight and ten inches deep down in here. I can get that brought up. Right. right there. I mean, you see how deep he's going, and we're still, once he goes through it, we still find potatoes down under there. Yep. See? <laughs> things you got four of these deep and from side to side i mean i 
mean, I'm past the end of the fork here underground. That's how soft the dirt is here. Look at that. Ooh, isn't that nice? That is so nice. And it was a nice size, too. Yeah, these are these are not little fingerling potatoes. These are big. Look at this. Look at that. Look. These are big as some of our regular reds. Yes. It's amazing. Now, these will turn faster, but they've already started getting little white spots. They have to be eaten or canned pretty fast. They don't last as long. Not storing anyway. What I love about soft soil. See that? <laughs> we couldn't do this if we had. Uh, if I had clay soil, I couldn't do this. You don't want to grow gardens in clay soil. You want sandy loam. There's a lot of people live in clay soil though, I and know, rocks. But you gotta, you gotta mix it up, make it right. I mean, this is awesome. I mean, these are some big potatoes. I see a harvest of French fingers. I know what we have them for lunch. Yes, this is sir. like my favorite. Here Out of any potato we have, the French fingers are absolute this favorites. Is absolute favorites. Look yeah. at that. Wow. Three of these make a meal. Alright, one of the things I want to mention when you're when you're growing potatoes, soft dirt. Is where it's at now you take like this dirt right here now i've got a fork these these hangs here are 10 inches long and then you know of course this right here you need to be able to take to grow good potatoes you see that just look at that i'm already 12 inches deep right here at this point down in the ground where i can break up and look at the way the ground breaks up it's not packy it's all good and loose I mean, guys, this is where it's at when it comes to growing potatoes. You want good, loose soil so that you have uh, an ample place for your potatoes to take off and to grow. Not something where you got to be sitting there in the ground like concrete. Even if you have to amend the soil. See how easy this soil is breaking up ahead of this? These are little old bitty potatoes right here getting them out of the way i like to be able to just take my so my fork ahead of myself and go up under the next plants and start lifting up and bring it back it's the easiest way to harvest potatoes you don't want soil that's all packed and hard and potatoes just never do good when you're in that type of soil now this dirt here is the dirt that we dug out of bottom of the pond i mentioned a while ago and it has made a fantastic place mixed in with the sandy dirt that was already here. Guys, we got more fingerling potatoes down through there and we're going to know what to do with This has been our bumper crop this year. And my friends, these are fingerlings. Now look at this. These are fingerling potatoes. The seed stock for these came from Hoss Tool Seed Company. If any of you guys bought fingerling potatoes, the French fingerling from Hoss Tool, let me know, did yours grow as big as ours? We got, we got French fingerlings down through there as big as all the other potatoes. I have never grown French, French fingerlings this large. This is the best seed stock I think I have ever got from anybody, and it was from Hoss Tool Seed Company. Look at the size of some of them. That's amazing. Well, guys, Wanda and I have finished digging the row of French fingerlings uh, here. This is an 80-foot row. We planted one row of them. It is one of our favorite potatoes. And we planted an 80-foot row because this is what we're usually usually harvesting off of French fingerlings right here, this size right here. That's what we usually always get every year. You know, and we figured an 80-foot row would probably give us maybe just, you know, enough to eat on good. But, guys, this year... The Lord has been really good to us. I want you to look at the size of the fingerlings this year. Now we did a little, we did, we done some things a little different this year. Now that's a lot of difference between that and that. 
We've got literally several five gallon bucket fulls of them this year. Now we did come in this year and we did put the pond dirt on top of the ground up here and we turned it all in, tilled it, mixed it all in real good and just, you know, let it set most all winter. And then we came in here and guys, I loaded this ground up with triple 13 fertilized. You know, a lot of people say, you know, condemn it, but I'm sitting here looking at at, at this right here. This right here tells me I made the right decision. Now we built these up on high beds because if we had not, as wet as this dirt is, because you see this dirt, look at that, it's still, it's still holding together, it's still wet. And that like pond dirt is making it stay a lot damper and it's a lot richer, got a lot more organic matter in it than what the sandy soil up here used to have. Uh, that tells me that it's holding together good. It's a good sandy loom soil. So we went ahead and decided to dig these today. And guys, I am thoroughly impressed. Now these, like I mentioned, came from Hoss Tool Seed Company. Uh, great seed stock. We will be trying to save the best ones we can out of this for seed for next year to see how they do. I'm going to tell you, if you're a container gardener, I would do the French fingerlings. I'm not going to lie to you. If you can get that dirt rich enough with enough nutrition, the French fingerlings will outproduce any potato that we've had so far as far as just being a, and the taste, the taste is phenomenal. I mean, to me, it's the best tasting potato on the market out there. Uh, now we love the white Russian ones. They've got a buttery taste. We like our red ones over here for making potato salad and stuff like that. But as far as just all around eating and soups and just to have a potato to just eat and doing french fries. Now that's one thing. These potatoes are long and narrow. You can take these things and slice them up like this and make french fries out of them. We call them steak fries down in the south here. Uh, and cook them things. Oh my goodness. They make the best. And we have one occasionally like this here we hit with a fork. Uh, today me and Ms. Wanda will be having these for, uh, for lunch so we don't have to put them in with the others. Guys, potato harvest this year, we still got one, two, three more rows to go. And I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be a lot of potatoes this year. We were cutting back thinking that we were doing the right thing, but because of the bounty this year and the size, I think we're probably still gonna have as many as we've always had, even with cutting back. So. You can do a smaller amount, take better care of the ground, and have a larger quantity and a better quality uh, potato. Guys, this is sustainability right here. This potato can be used for just about anything. As a matter of fact, in some parts of the world, it is the go-to thing for being sustainable. Uh, you can do anything with it. You can fry it, you can, you can bake it, you can cook it in all kinds of foods. It's just like a, it's like a tomato or ground beef. You can use it in just about anything that you cook. So grow you some fingerling potatoes, guys. And I hope you've enjoyed the potato dig today on this part so far. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get to the other ones today, but I don't think we are. It's done, got really hot. It's fixing to be nine o'clock and the heat, you can see the sun is bearing down on me real bad right now. There's not a cloud in the sky, it's perfectly blue. And when that happens in the deep south, that means intense heat. We went from 50 degrees this morning. The wind's blowing right now. If it wasn't for the wind, we'd have done been out of here. And it's probably bumping 75, going for 80 degrees already in just a matter of about two or three hours. So that's where we're gonna leave it. We may let some of these, uh, we gotta get them out of the sun. We don't want the sun to start turning them green. We want to get them gathered up and get them in a dark, cool place. You don't want to wash them because that just ruins it. Guys, got to get rolling. Well, guys, we finished digging all of our potatoes here, and we run into something here that we've never had in the Deep South. We had one of our Kenebec white potato plants actually go to seed and make the little small potatoes on top of it. We don't ever have that in the south here where I'm at. I'm trying to get it here where we get this leaf out of the way. I don't want to break it off, but you can see these were the, uh, they look like a, a tomato almost, 
But this was the potato seeds that bloomed. Now, this is a seed. I'm uh, not sure what to do with them just yet because we've never had them here. I will be doing some research on it to see if I plant this back or what I do. But these were the Kenebec Whites. They made some uh, decent potatoes. Not anything, you know, not anything to brag about. But they're, you know, they're nice potatoes. Good eating size for us anyway here. We got a, a lot of potatoes off of our stuff this year, guys. And, um... I guess we could take you down and show you a little bit about what we harvested, but we're going to try to uh, save these right here. And if any of you guys ever have this happen and uh, you know what to do with them, put a comment down below and um, I'm going to be doing some research to see if I can figure out, uh, do I plant these or what do I do with them? Do they have a seed inside them? Uh, this is pretty interesting to us here because in the south, this just is almost something that never happens. All right, guys, we got a five-gallon bucket full and a piece of the two-gallon bucket here of the uh, Kenebec Whites, uh, which is, I guess, about what we expect here in the deep south of what we got. Then we got our Yukon Golds just did not do anything. They don't ever do anything here in the south. Uh, all of these potatoes which were planted exactly the same fertilized the same everything was the same on them same length of rows all this kind of stuff these just the yukon golds just didn't do hardly anything now the kenebec whites did pretty decent now these are the purple majesties these uh i think these are probably going to be one of our go-to potatoes we're believing that these are an uh indeterminate based on what we saw here uh, we saw that potatoes were growing all up the potato plant uh, when it fell over and touched the ground so from this point forward we will be experimenting with these to see if we can uh get them to do that we love the taste of these now we've grown a lot of blue ones in the past here we just did not care for but this purple majesty seems like it has a more potato taste it's not as dry it's a lot better tasting potato so we're going to probably stick with this variety it's very prolific uh does really well here if you're a container gardener, I would advise the Purple Majesties because one and I are going to be putting some in containers from this point forward. We believe that if you put them deep in a container and keep adding dirt to them, that these will make a pile of potatoes as they go up the stalk. You just keep covering it with dirt. Uh, I haven't done a lot of research on them yet. I, I, I'm the kind of person that I like to learn my stuff firsthand. I don't really care for what anybody else has to say about something. I like to figure it out on my own and find out if it's going to work in my climate. And down in here in the heat, these Purple Majesties are working for us. None of the other blue ones really did that well for us. You know, they just seem to sprout real early and all that kind of stuff in our heat. But the Purple Majesties seem like they're doing good. Now, guys, all these potatoes this year, except for the, uh, the red potatoes that we planted, came from Hall's Tool. And we're very, uh, very satisfied with the seed stock that we got from Hall's Tool. So this coming year, if you're interested in potatoes, I would say to check out Hall's Tool Seed Company early because they sell out real fast. And guys, we have two more buckets of our red Lesotas here. Now this was a row and three quarter of these potatoes. This makes four buckets we got off of a row and three quarters of another row, which tells us that they outproduce any potato that we grow here. That's why our, they're our go-to potato. Now, we also have two buckets of French fingerlings that we harvested. Uh, they were technically as big as these. Um, so we'll, we're trying to decide. This is our last year of experimenting. We're from this point forward, with our food system being the way that it is, there's not going to be any more experimenting here with Deep South, I don't think. I think from this point forward, we're going to stick with what we know works. And that's going to be the red Lesotas here in the south, the French fingerlings here in the south, the purple majesties here in the south, and I probably won't even do any whites anymore. The Kenebec whites, we had a lot of problem with them. The big old potatoes were rotten in the middle. Uh, ants seemed to attack the plants really, really bad. So we probably won't do any more of the big white potatoes. Now we may plant some more of the white Russian fingerlings. Uh, not a lot of them but we'll plant some just to have to mix in with our English peas and snap beans and jars and stuff. 
just simply because they're so small. But guys, this is a little bit about our potato harvest this year and what varieties worked here in the deep south for us and what varieties we won't be planting anymore, what varieties we will be planting. We will not be planting any Yukon Gold. We will not be planting any Kenebec Whites. None of the uh, uh, all blue uh, purple potatoes and stuff like this. We will only do the varieties that I've said. The red Lesotas that we have here, French Fingerling, the uh, Purple Majesty, and maybe a few white Russian fingerlings. And that'll be it for us for this point forward. Now, we do have the seed stock that we saved here from the Kenebec whites. Uh, I will be experimenting with these if I can to see if I come up with something. And who knows, I may come up with a potato that's a white potato that works in the South. Who knows? So guys, stick with us and continue to watch the harvesting of products and produce here at Deep South Homestead. I think you'll enjoy it. If you hadn't subscribed, subscribe to us and hit that notification bell so that when we do a video, you're notified and you're able to figure out and find out along with us what works in the South. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.